это опасно или не опасный город жить тут? Ну, есть некоторые определенные районы, которые довольно-таки опасны да. для жизни. А так, в целом, спокойный город. Да, в принципе, я думаю, что в центре не проблема ничего. Да? Нет. Ну, да. есть такие места, там, где лучше вечером не ходить. Девушкам, особенно моделям. Одна гулять на улице, это опасно, да? Да. Summertime. I'm here in Maidan, the main square in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And just seven years ago, this place was the site of a revolution. I was here for it, actually. And it definitely didn't feel like the safest place in Europe to come to or to live back in early 2014, late 2013. But now we are getting into the summer in 2021. So today's Tip Thursday with me, Connor Klein. I'm going to be answering whether it is safe relatively safe to live in Ukraine in 2021 by Italy. So I'm going to start with petty crime. So we're going to say like non-violent crime, you know, where people scam you out of money or they rob you, steal your phone, steal your cash, uh, something dishonest like that. Now here in Ukraine, petty crime has been on the decrease over the last five years. So it's been dropping still overall. It's not, you know, if you compare it to Western Europe, it's a bit higher here, but you know, my perception, my client's perception, my friend's perception is, and local people, is that in the city centers, it's not a major issue. And I definitely feel a lot safer here than, say, when I'm in Ireland or if I'm in the UK or in Brussels, where, where I lived for a good number of years. I mean, these things can happen anywhere. So I think if you're taking normal precautions, then you should be good to go on the petty crime, like being pickpocketed and stuff like that. It's not a major issue uh, here in city centers in uh, Ukraine, unlike a lot of big tourist cities in Western Europe, where you have a lot of pickpocketing going on. There is a bit of a difference when I look at the statistics in terms of petty crime or crime in general uh, geographically in Ukraine. Now, in the south and east of the country, the crime rates are considerably higher than, say, in the center and the west in particular. So basically, crimes tend to decrease the further west you go in Ukraine. So if you're over in Lviv, crime is a lot lower than it's going to be, say, historically in Odessa or uh, maybe here in Kharkiv or in Dnipro. So the big but in this video about petty crime is, and if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know what I'm going to talk about next. The biggest danger in terms of petty crime, so like non-violent crime, is romance scams. Massive, absolute huge industry, I would say, here in Ukraine. Uh, what I wasn't aware of was how sophisticated this new type of scam was. I wouldn't say it was she. It was how they managed to hook me in. It's a little bit of an update because I'm making this video in June 2021. There is a new variation, I guess, on the scam uh, <laughs> taking place in Kiev at the moment because uh, two of the guys who were on my um, high-level consultation group, Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine, they've told me about it because they've encountered temps on it in Kiev in the last, uh, last couple of weeks, actually. One of the main scams is the restaurant, nightclub scam, where basically you're lured by a woman into a particular restaurant and stuff and basically have an agreement with the restaurant. They're getting a big cut of that check and they rack up an enormous bill. And if you try to leave, then some burly bouncer comes along and says, oh, you have to pay the bill, even though this wasn't a genuine date or anything like that. The new one, doing the new variation on it is to uh, meet you on a dating app uh, and then say, hey, let's go to this place. And then they make it very weird about the address. Uh, it's kind of a residential address. They want you to meet them there. Uh, one, of my, one of my friends actually told me as well about it that uh, he actually happened to live next door to the address. He's like, well, we can just meet downstairs. And the girl got very fishy about it, wanting to meet in person. Uh, and then basically it transpired. She started asking for his photos, because like it's on the app. Why do you need, to, need a photo of me? And then he started to suspect it wasn't the same girl as actually the photo on the app or even the same person. So basically it seems like they kind of outsource from the app, the person you were thinking you're going to meet to a different woman who shows up and then he was brought to a very dodgy, no, I wouldn't say dodgy. It was more like, it was just like a very low level kind of bar. 
said you had to go underground. It was kind of like an apartment that they kind of tried to convert into a restaurant, but very, very sketchy, very low level, and of course racked up a huge bill. If they're giving you just a residential address, and it's not the person in the photo uh, who shows up there to meet you, and then you've been brought in somewhere that looks pretty dingy. Abandon ship, leave, just go. was in Zanzibar and they were in Tanzania, maybe you know. Yeah, yeah. They it's traveling right? to see like uh, wild animals, but actually I'm a little bit afraid of uh, Don't such... Don't I was also, look, before I came to Ukraine, I was afraid to come to Ukraine. Everybody to Ukraine? Said, yeah, they, oh, it's very dangerous, they will kill you, they will take everything. I said, oh my God, what is this? Huh? It's her son, so... <laughs> Hello, Tony, it's very interesting to hear that you uh, thought that uh, Ukraine might be scary. Yeah, really, a little bit. You look afraid. Yeah, I, I, I was. It was my mistake. My friends, they, they warned me, do not go to Ukraine. It can be very dangerous there. And, and, and. But I said, no risk, no fun. I travel to Ukraine and everything is great and everything is very, very beautiful. You can see that. Yeah. See that. So, more serious obviously than petty crime is violent crime. And the homicide rate here in Ukraine is about 3.4 people per 100,000 who live here. So to give you a comparison, in the rest of Europe, like Western Europe, it's going to be just a little bit under one. So that means that it's about three times higher here in Ukraine than it would be, say, in the UK or Ireland or any of those countries in Western Europe, which just sound an awful lot higher. It's actually about half of what it is in Russia. Uh, it's already, <laughs> already it's a lot better than being in Russia in terms of the, the murder rate. Now, that may seem like there are people being shot dead left, right and center here in Ukraine. But I have to say, again, in the city centers, uh, or amongst foreigners here, it's pretty unheard of uh, to someone to get shot or to someone to get uh, violently attacked. It's pretty rare. Just be aware of the dangers that there are in general. It's kind of the same for traveling anywhere and you're good to go. And just one final point. I remember before the Euromaidan revolution in 2014 that the police here were a major issue for shaking down tourists. They used to be like this uniformed uh, pack of bandits basically and if they spotted you and realized you were a foreigner straight away ask you for your ID if you didn't have your passport with you they would basically look for money in exchange for not bringing you to the police station and I even heard stories back in the day about even if you had your passport still took your police station stole your passport and then demanded money to find it again for you now thankfully that I have not heard about it since 2014 since the change of government here after the revolution. Right, let's get on to the next issue. Do you feel that Ukraine is very dangerous? Is there a dangerous place or not? Yes, I feel that I've always felt safe. Although when the war started, I was in the same time 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 Мои родители, они... Ну, была такая мысль, что здесь, как бы мы близко к Донецку, к Луганску, и что будет здесь опасно. Но э, я ни разу не засомневалась, поступив сюда, э, и здесь я чувствую себя превосходно. So the last thing I'd like to discuss in today's video is the situation with Russia. And obviously, you're probably aware that back in 2014, Russia annexed Crimea, and there has been a low intensity conflict in the east of the country in Donbass for the last few years. So the violence uh, with respect to the war between, undeclared war between Russia and Ukraine is just in the east of the country. It's isolated to parts of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. Basically, uh, there has been a stalemate for more or less a stalemate. There's a line of control and there's kind of like trenches there, uh, but it's not going to affect you uh, here in everyday life in Ukraine. Now, back in April, tensions soared when Russia uh, built up a large number of troops, enough troops for some sort of military incursion into Ukraine. They claimed at the time it was just redeployment or uh, running maneuvers or whatnot. Ukraine was worried it might be something 
bigger than that. Uh, and since then, the situation has calmed down. Basically, it seems like at this moment that that's not an imminent uh, possibility. There will be any further escalation in the violence. Uh, seemed at the time pretty much like a faint uh, dry run for an invasion. And then there's some dim diplomatic moves going behind the scenes that resolved it for it. Now, I'm always actually a bit amused when we'll say dating coaches on YouTube start telling you what they think Putin you know what he's calculating as if they have any sort of clue whatsoever but if you have some I guess IOR experience international relations training or you've worked in intelligence or you worked in the military then you probably be a bit better positioned to figure it out anyways bottom line is the conflict is pretty much maybe not frozen completely uh, and actually a difference might be just maybe out of interest in Moldova you do have a separatist republic called Transnistria Prednostovia and there you can actually go without much bother and cross into that border and actually go there to Tiraspol and I will do that at some stage in a future vlog I have filmed there it's probably you might have seen some footage you're not known it's actually from there that's not the situation used to Ukraine uh, you can't just cross over uh, because the conflict is not frozen like in Moldova it is there is still violence on more or less a daily basis on that line of control between the two sides so that's it if you're in a big city and you're living here it is not affecting you uh, whatsoever on a daily basis and touch wood will not affect you going forward. Just before I go today, I did reference earlier that two of the participants on my high level consultation group Slavic Utopian Secrets, Ukraine, they have been giving me some feedback about their experience in Kiev since they arrived and they are staying longer than the three months visa free and that is why they've been sorting out their residency both of them as, as well as about another three four five i don't know how many clients have been helping so far maybe about seven or eight actually we're up to at this stage with getting residents here in ukraine that's necessary if you want to stay longer than the 90 day every 180 days visa free here in ukraine uh, not only that on the program, the High Level Consultation Group, we go into deep into the real estate market here in Ukraine because it is a huge attraction to invest in at the moment. Also, we go into the healthcare options if you're living here. Also go into the business opportunities, how to network, how to not end up Billy Nomates if you move here. I have another podcast on that uh, as well on the channel. And lastly, how to overcome the language barrier because it is quite significant here in Ukraine compared to say moving to Sweden I, I was watching a channel uh, uh, about for guys who moved to Sweden but yeah Sweden's also cool by the way also got lots of pretty girls but it is about minimum five six times more expensive to live there so by moving to Eastern Europe you can 5x your lifestyle <laughs> compared to moving to Sweden for sure it's down below there is a link it's on demand if you want to join uh, and also I open it up for the live versions uh, so far it's been twice a year I'll probably just do it once a year live in the future but in order to be notified of that make sure you're on my free mailing list down below there's also a link to get on that if you're not on that already uh, you just type in your email address and then confirm that you're not a robot and you'll also receive a free gift from me which is the Zara's hotspots for cities like Kiev, Odessa and neighboring Minsk in Belarus or Minsk in neighboring Belarus so got all that good stuff for you down there and I bid you farewell on this uh, little bit cloudy evening in Kharkiv very close to the Russian border in super safe and super free relatively free especially after all this COVID mayhem that has afflicted large parts of North America actually large parts of the world I think it's been one of the freest definitely one of the freest regions in the last year Dopovachna Disvedanya Ciao Ciao Sar Experience Подписывайтесь на канал, ставьте лайки и приезжайте в Харьков.